Hello, my name is Laura Lawfer. I'm the project director for Empowering Mountain Food Systems. We are a three-year project based in southwestern North Carolina. We're an initiative of the Center for Environmental Farming Systems, and we receive support from the Appalachian Regional Commission, North Carolina State University, and the Cherokee Preservation Foundation. Today, we have a webinar hosted by us and the Appalachian Sustainable Agriculture Project. ASAP is a partner in our project, and for the past six months, they have conducted a food and farming assessment of the region. So this report today will give us a bit of a scope of their work and their findings that will help guide us um, over the next two and a half years as we seek to increase food and farming income in the region. So with that, I will hand it over to Charlie Jackson, ASAP's executive director. And Charlie will introduce us to the work of ASAP his team, and an overview of the project. This webinar will be recorded and will be posted on our website, as will the full report from ASAP. We look forward to working with you over the next few years as we work to empower farmers in the region to grow our local food economy. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, thank you, and uh, we're excited to be part of this project. Uh, as Laura said, I'm Charlie Jackson. I'm here with Amy Marion and Sarah Hart from ASAP. They're going to do most of this presentation, uh, but will all be available. At the end, uh, as Laura said, please share any questions in chat and we'll circle back around and try to answer as many of those as we can. Um, and just know that in this, this assessment, uh, there's quite a lot of detailed information there. We're gonna be covering top level um, findings and uh, recommendations today in this webinar, but there's a tremendous amount of detail in the content of that assessment that'll be available uh, soon um, to, to help guide this project. So uh, uh, please do ask questions. And if uh, we're unable to get them today, you know, you can send Laura, uh, you can uh, send them to me and we'll be happy to, to try to communicate uh, responses to all that. Um, ASAP's a nonprofit organization. Uh, we started in the mid nineties uh, in anticipation of loss of tobacco and the impacts that was going to have on farms in Western North Carolina. Uh, the uh, strategy that we hit on starting in 2000 was to promote local food and to help uh, connect the community to our farms as a way to help farms transition from agriculture. And uh, we were fortunate to be out early in what has become a trend. I, I just saw a post yesterday that uh, 2020 promises to be a top local food year again for um, grocers and restaurants uh, that is uh, really taken off in ways that we never could have imagined. Um, and uh, it's been exciting to be part of it and see some of the transformation that's occurring here uh, in Western North Carolina. Uh, my organization has three primary programs, uh, Growing Minds, which is uh, working on farm to school, uh, Local Food Research Center, which does assessments and other types of research uh, and evaluation. Uh, and also a local food campaign and a few of the things that you might be familiar with in our local food campaign are the local food guide, which we've been doing since 2002 and update annually. A lot of you uh, farmers and uh, businesses that are on the webinar today will be getting a call pretty soon and lots of emails. Um, and uh, that's uh, updated uh, online and, uh, and in print every year. We have a business of farming conference every year uh, and then we do an Appalachian Grown program so that when farmers are getting into markets where they're not selling directly, uh, there's uh, information there about uh, farms being gen gen genuinely uh, from Western North Carolina. Uh, that's, uh, I'm gonna turn this over right now to Amy Marion, who's uh, in our local food research center, and she's gonna go through uh, some of the details about uh, this assessment and, and some of uh, what we found. Great, thanks Charlie. So as Laura mentioned, we were tasked with assessing these aspects of the food system in Southwestern North Carolina. It was a lot to cover, but ultimately our final assessment mirrors these goals. Um, here's an outline of what our project entails. We looked at the project region in terms of geography, demographics, and economic drivers followed by an examination of farming in the region and market opportunities for local food. We then looked at intersections between farming and tourism, as well as agricultural infrastructure along the supply chain. Finally, we looked at agricultural internship and career ladder opportunities, followed by K-12 
continuing education, training, and certification needs. So here's what our process looked like. Uh, multiple assessments have been conducted around food in this region. So our first step was to find and analyze those existing 15 or so reports so that we could get an understanding of and build on what has already been identified in the region. We then turn to various data sets on food and farming. So a lot of our data comes from the Census of Agriculture, which is the most complete and comprehensive account of U.S. agricultural activities. It's conducted every five years, and luckily the most recent one was done in 2017, so it's really current right now. Um, and it provides over six million data points down to the county level, so there's a lot to explore. We also pulled from ASAP's local food guide, which as Charlie mentioned, uh, has a database of nearly 900 farms, over 100 markets, and over 400 food businesses operating within 100 miles of Asheville, um, which of course includes the project's uh, seven counties. So that database is also updated annually so with farmer reported data, so it stays very current. Finally, we used other existing ASAP data, including data from an annual survey that we send to all of our Appalachian grown farmers. Uh, using data from the Census of Agriculture, as well as consumption estimates, we calculated how much produce is currently grown in the region and com compared it to estimates of how much food is consumed and the dollar value of that food. And we also looked at the potential spending of other regional market centers like Greenville and Atlanta. This allowed us to make estimates for econ uh, economic potential, for the economic potential of shifting local food production, um, local production for, uh, food production for local <laughs> and regional markets. There we go. <laughs> Uh, so in June, we sent a survey to individuals who identified as having knowledge of local food and farming in southwestern North Carolina, which included farmers, distributors, agricultural service providers, food and beverage entrepreneurs, tourism professionals, and others. We also drew on surveys that we've conducted with farmers in the region as part of that annual farm sur farmer survey. This was followed by in-depth interviews with a dozen individuals who had particular knowledge about the region. And these included a cross section of farmers, agricultural service providers, and economic and resource development. Finally, we pulled all of that together into a report that's around 60 pages. And as Laura mentioned, will be publicly available in the near future. So feel free to dig into all those pages. <laughs> So here's the project region. Uh, it includes the seven rural counties of Cherokee, Clay, Graham, Haywood, Jackson, Macon, Swain, and the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. Many of the EBCI members live on property known as the Koala Boundary, which spans across Swain and Jackson counties uh, with a few non-contiguous sections in Cherokee and Graham counties. As many of you know, the region is very mountainous, which limits infrastructure development and isolates food and farm businesses. This map shows the region in relation to a few larger metropolitan areas that offer potential additional markets for agricultural products. And more than 70% of this land is uh, publicly owned in national parks and forests. And in contrast, 7% of it is in agriculture. And although there's limited land suitable for farming, the region does benefit from a temperate climate and lack of seasonal extremes, which allows for diverse crops to be produced nearly year round. So here's some information about the region. Uh, the two largest industry clusters are health services and education, both public and private. Uh, however, the two fastest growing industries are arts, entertainment, and recreation, as well as accommodation and food service, which are driven by the large amounts of public land and associated outdoor recreation, uh, recreational tourism opportunities. The population is just over 200,000 people, and about a third of those actually live in one county, Haywood County. Um, overall, the region's demographics are fairly similar to the rest of North Carolina, However, the median household income is lower, around 400,000, or sorry, 40,000, compared to 50,000 at the state level. Um, and a, a higher percentage of people are living in poverty, 
18.6% compared to 16.1% at the state level. And the region is about 88% white compared to 77% white across the state. Um, in addition to residents, tourists to the region contribute greatly to its economic development. The U.S. Travel Association reports that the direct visitor spending from the 14.5 million people that visited these seven counties in 2018 was over 88, uh, $885 million. These visitors are less racially diverse, higher educated, and have a higher median income than the average resident. So um, some information about farming in the region. According to that 2017 Census of Agriculture, there are uh, 1,759 farms covering 147,000 acres in the region. These are primarily small farms. The median size is about 36 acres, um, much smaller than what the USDA calls a small farm, which uh, is around 180 acres. So as I said before, 7% of the region's land is in farmland. Farmland as a census category includes cropland, which accounts for less than a quarter of all farmland in the region, along with 43% pasture land for grazing and 28% woodland in the form of timber tracks. Additionally, cropland includes not only fruits and vegetables, um, how we normally picture it, but also field crops like hay and Christmas trees, which are a significant farm product for area farms, uh, as well as floriculture and bedding crops um, from nurseries and greenhouses. The second chart here shows the top products produced in the region. You can see that farms raising cattle and farms supporting them with the production of hay and silage are most prevalent. 41% of farms report cattle as their primary product followed by 16% growing primarily hay and silage. Uh, a category here labeled as animal aquaculture and other animal production accounts for 14% of all farms, but this is kind of a catch-all grouping, including aquaculture like trout, but also includes farms with bees, horses, and other animals. And then 10% of the region's farms are growing fruits and vegetables as their primary crop. Um, of these, tomatoes, collards, squash, pumpkins, and sweet corn are the top crops in terms of market value. In 2017, the overall farm sales in the region were approximately $64.6 million. However, few farms in this region are operating as profitable full-time businesses. In fact, three quarters of these farms earned less than $10,000, which is more likely to just be supplemental income. And finally, the average age of farmers in the region is 59. So, um, using all that information, Sarah is now gonna take us through some of the recommendations that came out of this research. Right, and as Amy has mentioned, um, our full report is quite long, and these recommendations were drawn from uh, quite a bit of, of data and interviews and institutional knowledge. Uh, so if you want to dig into how the steps that uh, helped us arrive at these recommendations, uh, that full report will be available. But for the purposes of the webinar, we thought we would get right to the good stuff. Um, so our first uh, recommendation is to promote local food and farms to build demand. Um, ASAP's research has shown that consumer demand is crucial to the success of growing local food and farm businesses strategies and actions that continue to expand community support and demand for food grown by the region's farms is critical to the viability and sustainability of all local food and farm linked efforts. So implement strategies that will directly connect southwestern North Carolina residents to their farms and their local food systems. Citizens who are actively engaged with local farms and food will become advocates for local agriculture and local food products and will provide the foundation for continued expansion of opportunities for farmers and other entrepreneurs in the project region. So with each of these um, overarching recommendations, we identified some action steps uh, within those. So uh, looking at these action steps, and that's what you see on this slide, uh, to collaborate with existing branding efforts to identify local food in the marketplace, 
coordinate county level by local programs to cross promote food and farms, partner with local media to tell the stories of farmers in the region and to promote what is being grown and produced and where it can be found, support direct markets and other direct experiences. Uh, that includes CSAs, farm stands, farmers markets and UPIX, which put a face on the food. So number two, connect farmers and food, entre on, <laughs> food entrepreneurs to markets. Um, supporting, and this ties into the last action step, supporting direct marketing channels such as CSAs and workplace CSAs, farmers markets, farm stands, and UPICs uh, by promoting out existing outlets, assisting with their expansion, and connecting farmers with training opportunities in direct marketing topics such as salesmanship and display, food safety, and marketing. Support farmers in developing business relationships with appropriate local buyers, including restaurants, groceries, distributors, and institutions. In an expanding local food system, determining the suitability of connections is crucial to ensure the satisfaction and sustainability of these relationships. Farmers need specific information about what markets are available to them and how to access them. Food businesses need to understand the qualities of local products and how they can adapt their procurement and distribution systems to accommodate them. In assuming a role as a mediator between farmers and buyers, it is important to understand the desires and requirements of particular market outlets and the capacity of different types of farms to meet those requirements. Our action steps are expand the capacity of farmers market management in the region support the development and promotion of CSAs, including workplace CSAs, assess market desires and industry requirements of buyers across market segments, including restaurants, large and small groceries, school districts, and hospital systems, including, sorry, we've got a typo there, uh, including packaging and labeling, food safety certification, quality standards and traceback, product quantities and distribution requirements. Work with local farmers to assess the capacity of their operations, direct them to suitable market outlets, and prepare them to meet those standards and requirements. So number three, link tourism to local food and farms. Tourism is a, in the region is a major and growing economic driver, generating an impact of nearly 885 million in 2018, over a third of which is spent on food and drink. Work, work, with a tourist, work within a tourism framework to brand the region as a food and farm destination, cross-promoting with other growing tourism sectors, such as outdoor recreation, brewing, and restaurant industries. Uh, so our action steps, build partnerships with tourism agencies, identify tourist attraction clusters, including farms, outdoor recreation activities, restaurants, and breweries to cross-promote to attract visitors. Um, I want to say just a little bit more about that one because I'm not sure we've hit that point um, and in some of our top level uh, outlines so far. The, the project region is one of the things we heard consistently about the project re uh, region was its lack of density of farms. Um, so, so really looking at, at these clusters as opposed to just promoting agritourism on farms that may be far apart, um, I think was a, a, a pretty key piece we identified. Um, create accurate resources that guide visitors to authentic local food and farm linked events and destinations. Integrate farms, farmers markets, farms to table restaurants, etc. into existing regional and county tourism promotion and guides and encourage restaurants and breweries to identify farm and farmer names on menus and labels. Uh, next recommendation is to enhance infrastructure and work with farmers and entrepreneurs to support their enterprises. Uh, farmers and entrepreneurs should lead in determining infrastructure investments. Existing enterprises should be supported and connected to other opportunities. Shared infrastructure projects face challenges due to lack of farm density. Farmers may be best served by smaller infrastructure investments on individual farms. Conduct full feasibility studies and business plans for any new larger scale projects with clear expectations about whether they are intended to be self-sustaining or grant-supported models. And action steps, make connections between existing infrastructure, uh, of which there is much more detail in the full report, uh, develop cost share or grant options for farm and food business infrastructure projects, 
leverage economic development incentives and low interest loans to finance projects, identify the most promising new or enhancement infrastructure projects and conducts feasibility studies. Examples, example opportunities might include supporting farmer managed infrastructure, such as what exists currently at the Drexel plant, uh, underutilized assets within EBCI, such as the trout hatchery and tribal cannery or sustainable agriculture models. And again, these are examples. There are many, many opportunities um, to be further explored within the report. Um, integrate food and farm into economic development planning and create supportive policies. Demonstrate the way farms and foods, farm and food assets can be support regional economic development goals. Farms in the project region generate nearly 65 million in sales annually. Many of these farms are only tapping into a fraction of the potential income and value of their land. Growth in demand for local food and farm products is documented nationally and regionally and is expected to continue. Action steps here show the economic benefits of homegrown food businesses and make a case for investment in food entrepreneurs. Review existing regulations and policies that may be hindering the production or sale of locally produced farm products. Create or help create new supportive policies. Promote county and state level programs to support agriculture use. Connect farmers with farmland preservation and transition opportunities, such as NC Farm Link and land trusts. Consider farm and food, food and farm development inclusively, making space for cow-calf, woodland, nursery crops, and other prominent agriculture enterprises, and advocate for the needs of farmers around labor issues. Um, next recommendation, support farmer and food business efforts to meet sales potential. Um, to access the opportunities in local markets successfully, farmers need a combination of skills, resources, and support in multiple areas. Farmers need assistance in navigating complex labor issues. Farmers need training and expertise in business and market planning to effectively diversify their farm businesses and market their products locally. Farmers need to understand industry standards for different types of local market outlets, including packaging, labeling, food safety requirements, distribution, quality standards, traceback standards, etc. Farmers need help in identifying the crops, that, the crops to grow and how to grow them to meet potential market demand. And this combination of assistance provides farmers with the support needed to make decisions and implement practices based on careful planning. Decisions based on planning reduce risk and increase the likelihood that strategies are successful. Action steps include connecting, connect farmers with existing training and technical assistance opportunities, leverage partner expertise to offer support to farmers and food businesses, ensure those opportunities are accessible across the region, partner with community colleges, nonprofits, NCDA, cooperative extension, and other, and other agencies and organizations for support, and identify unmet needs and work to develop support systems for those. And our last is coordinate, convene, and build on existing efforts and successes. This assessment cites many resources and tools available to farmers in southwestern North Carolina. Partners with, uh, partner with existing support organizations and enhance and expand existing efforts wherever possible. Great work and research is being done. Build on it. Develop a uh, so our action steps include develop a food and farm team to advise and guide this effort. Inventory the services, programs, and products offered by farmer support organizations in the region and find ways to build, to enhance or build on those efforts, build on completed feasibility studies and assessments. Um, Go ahead. Is that okay. Yeah. So um, there's a chat box. Please ask questions. Uh, and as we noted in all of this, uh, these were high level recommendations where there's a, a lot more detail in the final uh, assessment. And um, we've got a question from Laura around trout production. And we reached out, the, so one of the uh, challenges with the census of agriculture is a lot of uh, data is withheld at the county level if it uh, uh, will identify a single producer. And, and so it was uh, hard to get and nurse out of the uh, census data, the uh, importance of trout uh, in the region. It is a, an extremely important uh, farm product in the region. Um, we've 
been in communications with Deborah Sloan to, to get a little bit more uh, detail about that. And uh, it's in the full report. Um, one of the things uh, that we uh, found in uh, conducting this research is there's um, a, a lot of opportunity uh, seen in trout production and there's various pieces of infrastructure that exist that aren't very well uh, coordinated and connected right now and um, it felt like a, an area of tremendous potential and uh, it is also uh, a product that is uh, very identified with the region and is one that's sought after by restaurants and others and be can become this uh, flagship product uh, of identifying the region uh, as it in reaching other markets. Uh, there's a question in here of, did we know where farmers get their information currently? That question was asked on the survey. Uh, we'll have a list of uh, those different places uh, in um, the full report. And uh, we what we heard from people was that they get information from us and other uh, nonprofit organizations that work for farmers, they get information from Cooperative Extension, from uh, other uh, federal agencies uh, and, uh, and state level agencies that provide information to farmers. Um, we have that in, in the report uh, yep. as uh, in, the, in a little more detail. Uh, value added production significant. So there's a question about uh, uh, beef and um, value added and um, beef and, and cow calf uh, is a really important issue. Uh, and there are, um, there is infrastructure that exists in the region around the cow calf operation with the Canton stockyard. Um, there is some transition in beef production to high value meets and some real interesting models with Brass Town and uh, Hickory Nut Gap is actually working with some farms uh, in the region to produce animals to certain standards and then market them under a, a collective brand. Um, uh, there have been uh, at least uh, two uh, fairly detailed studies on feasibility of large animal meat production processing uh, for uh, Western North Carolina. Um, and those are uh, discussed more and then uh, we include in this a uh, bibliographic, there's a lot of noise coming in from somewhere right now, but um, a, uh, a more explanation of uh, what those different uh, assessments of large animal meat processing would look like in the region. I don't know if that answered the question. Uh, there is a significant amount of uh, cows produced in the region. Cows are well suited to the land and landscape. It's part of the, the culture uh, and history of farming uh, in the region. Uh, it's also uh, very challenging and, um, and, uh, it, it, and it's uh, been uh, interesting to look at it in context of other opportunities for farmers in the region and to be able to think about it in, in a way of expanding and offer, uh, offering uh, more resources. That one's not a question, but a helpful suggestion. Oh, good. Thank you for your trout suggestion. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. <laughs> it's good seeing you, Bill. Uh, let's see, we have from Cameron. Uh, 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 let's mm. see. Uh, 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 Cameron's asking the question about um, actual demographics and uh, how is equity and inclusion considered? Is it representative of marginalized farmers and farmers of color in our region? Um, there's some discussion of that in the assessment. The assessment was primarily focused on uh, those uh, areas that we um, showed at the beginning uh, that we were looking at. And uh, um, there is some discussion of that, but uh, not explored in depth in this, uh, this assessment. I think you went back up to the top. Sorry, y'all. I'm trying to navigate this chat. Um, oh, okay. 
Uh, there are there other questions? Okay, everyone. Well, thank you so much. You guys did such an excellent job. It is a very long, thorough report. Um, yes. We, we look forward to, to delving deep into it and, uh, and looking at all of your resources that, that you brought together. Um, we look forward to continuing working with ASAP throughout the, the life of the, the project and, and appreciate um, the depth that y'all went through. Um, uh, again, this webinar is going to be recorded and the report will be available online. So um, we will send out uh, the link when, when those things are loaded onto our website. But encourage you all to, to stay tuned with um, all the innovations that we have coming up. We have some workshops coming up. We are placing our apprentices uh, in January and some in the summer. So uh, we've got a, a lot of activities already planned and, and this report will help guide us in some of our next steps. So thank you, Charlie, and to the team. Oh, one more question from Cameron. Uh, the recommendations are very focused on marketing for understandable reasons. Curious if were other elements of farmer needs were considered in the survey work, production training needs, social community quality of life. Um, so I can say that because this project really does focus on business support for food and farming, um, that is something that we asked uh, the ASAP team to focus on. Um, and, and we also asked about, uh, they also asked about training needs. Uh, we, from what I recall from the survey instrument and from the interviews, uh, we did not uh, ask, ask for information about social community quality of life needs. Charlie, do, do I have that right? Yeah, that's right. We asked, uh, this was very specific on meeting these market uh, needs um, and uh, and there, are, there, there is a list uh, in there around some of the top training and technical assistance that's needed by farmers and food entrepreneurs uh, in the region. Um, and then uh, there's other information identified about what's, uh, and particularly through some of the interviews that we conducted around what some of the real challenges are uh, with farmers, the top being labor right now, uh, uh, clearly across uh, almost every farmer we talked to uh, as, a, as a real challenging issue right now. Uh, and those are all described uh, and um, provided with some direction in the assessment. All right, well, thank you all for your thoughtful questions. And um, again, we look forward to, to sharing this report with everyone and, and having more conversations um, we will have webinars and blogs and meetings, a lot of activities coming up to, uh, to share uh, what we've learned here and what we will continue to learn throughout the life of the grant. All right, well, thank you everybody. And, uh, and we look forward to continuing to work with you. Is in there, the sorry. <laughs> Bill, oh. just put one last question around labor <laughs> and due to small farm size income. You know, it was actually some of the uh, bigger uh, yeah. produce producing farms that uh, identified that as a top issue uh, in, in some detail too. And uh, that's described in the assessment about where uh, some of these different producers and, and uh, support personnel identified uh, where need was uh, most around labor. Uh, I, I think we, I don't know that we heard it uh, specifically uh, connected to small farm. You know, they're, they're certainly dealing with labor issues as well, but um, it was some of the bigger farms where that was uh, uh, identified as, the, as one of the very top issues. <laughs> right. All right. Well, thank you again, y'all. It was um, a very well um, presented uh, overview of, of a lot of data. So, um, right. righty, folks. Well, thank you very much. Uh, enjoy this uh, beautiful Friday and um, please stay in touch with our project. We look forward to staying in touch with you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody.